Kenmo started in Mozambique in, in 1987, looking for heavy sands in a place called Congoloni, which is about 70 kilometers north of where we are mining currently. When we arrived in Mozambique, Mozambique was in a fairly difficult situation. The parties in Mozambique, Frelimo and Renamo, commenced a civil war which extended from 1984 through to 1993. Uh, so this, this uh, war of destabilization, as we called it, was the one that destroyed many of the infrastructure with the support of apartheid South Africa. Mozambique only came out of its civil war in 1992, first democratic elections in, in 1994, and really it was still considered to be a, a bit of an unknown quantity. There were no big projects in the north of Mozambique. There had been no significant mining development anywhere in the country since independence. It's a meaningful step in terms of the development of the North, that this project got up, got financed, got underway, and demonstrated that you could have major industrial development in northern Mozambique. The MoMA project actually uh, comprises about eight different ore bodies and stretches about 200 kilometers along the coast, north to south. The local people had no education no understanding of, of any industrial situation ever before because they never experienced it. And so I was worried that they wouldn't even be able to get jobs. We were conscious that this mine is going to have some effect on these local people. You know, you have to sort of live with yourself as well. And uh, I wanted to be able to come back to uh, the area regularly and feel good that the effect that we were having was a positive effect on their lives, not a negative effect. We started a not-for-profit development organization called KIMAD. Its objective was to enhance the capacity of the local community to benefit from the presence of the mining operation in their vicinity. There's a community liaison department that's run by a lady called Regina Makuakua. Regina knows every single one of these local people. She's a very popular person and she spends her time out in the community. KEMAD is the Kenman Warmer Development Association that was founded back in 2004 by the board of directors of Kenman Resources as an association that will implement the corporate social responsibility and support the development of the communities that surround the mine. My name is Ketano Murani. Um, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I started working for Kenya last year, sometime in, in, in February. There was actually an agreement that was signed between Kenya and the government. That memorandum basically uh, talks about two items. The first item is got to do with the number of expatriates that you have in the company. So it means then if you've got too many expatriates, you need to reduce them and, and achieve those figures. Basically, I'm talking about uh, having a figure of 8% of expatriates. The rest of employees, they need to be Mozambicans. The second side to it is the training itself. It doesn't happen just to replace an ex expatriate. You need to train them. So there's a couple of programs that have been agreed as well that we need to put in place. At the moment, I've got South Africans and Zimbabweans basically uh, playing that role of artisans in the company. And as part of the localization, I need to replace these people. For me to be able to replace them, I need to help produce my own artisans. Kenme has adopted a local employment policies, specifically looking at the unskilled people that live in this area. We have examples, very great examples of local people that have had the opportunity to work for the mine and actually grow in their career. One of the persons that I could mention is Abdul Abakar. He is now working as a supervisor and he started as an assistant. 
É, aqui no Mar eu comecei a trabalhar como ajudante da, da sonda, como, como um geólogo com a lista do Dr. Brown. E por causa do meu lado, eu passei lá primeiro como soldador e, por sua vez, e quando vi que a Kenma já está desenvolvido, então passei para a Kenmar passou-me para poder dirigir na área do campo. Eu como supervisor da pessoa que eu vou que eu trabalho com ele lá no campo. Just to mention examples and show you that it's possible to actually invest in the local people. Augusto Sen is another example not just from the local community, but from Moma town, which is still the area within the, the project. Augusto is a local guy, uh, and he started here as an assistant. Today, Augusto is a supervisor. My name is Ocean Augusto. I'm so natural of this district, so do, so the Moma, the district of Moma. When I joined the company in 2007, I worked in a mobile workshop. The company confiou in me. Felizmente consegui ser promovido para supervisor e eu acho que foi graças ao meu empenho. Sempre redobrei esforços para mostrar o meu melhor no local de trabalho. Now in 2013, we've already had 54 Mozambicans being promoted. So, Augusto is one case, a very successful case, yes, but you've got a couple of these cases out across the planet. In January 2012, you had only expatriate managers. Today, you've got four managers who are Mozambicans. I think it's, it's important to remember that when we arrived, there was no other industry in Northern Mozambique whatsoever. The area was in a grip of absolute poverty, and consequently, the education system had completely broken down. The schools were in very bad shape throughout the country. The teachers were too scared to operate in the bush areas. So it was very difficult to get teachers into the schools in the early days. The life of Renamo Afrilimo, from my view, which is the record of the people of the Terra, I see that there is another thing. Another thing. A empresa de Kenny Mare faz-me junto eu o meu comunidade. Porque até que eles né, já construíram as cinco, as cinco aulas da escola. Está aqui, dizem que não se encontra o trabalho. Só ele, o povo comunitário tem que jurar em si. Since Ken Mare started here, Everyone wants to work for the mine, but unfortunately the mine cannot employ everyone. First, because there are limited skills and all of that, but as the mine is investing in educating the local communities, that will, that will improve the quality of the employees that Kenmer will have for the future. Education will be a major focus in the next coming three years. Previously, for obvious reasons, Kmart has focused on infrastructure development. So building schools, but not so much on building the quality of education. As salas que nós tínhamos lá, é para pequena chuva, tínhamos problema de os nossos papéis ficavam molhados e as crianças às vezes não tinham vontade de ir à escola porque já as salas eram feias mesmo já. Parece que era um lugar onde viam cabretos. Mas quando aqui entramos, as crianças têm vontade de ir à escola. Eu tenho certeza que, a partir dos nossos miúdos, um deles vão trabalhar na Kinema. We creating conditions for the locals to actually get an opportunity for capacity building. So we will not need to bring lots of people from outside for certain jobs. We did a baseline environmental assessment and one of the, one of the key factors in that was that 93% of all families did not have food security. And food security in that sense is defined as not knowing what they're going to eat tomorrow. In 2004 we began a construction project for the existing operation. 
and at the outset we recognised the need to provide an opportunity for the communities to benefit from the mine when it was up and running. So the association looked at a number of opportunities in terms of income generation projects. Principally, we want to support those businesses that can supply products to the mine so they have a, a, a ready market and we can leverage the demand of the mine to empower them. The most successful projects that we've had going are sewing projects in which associations of sewers produce the sample bags for the mine. We need to provide them the ongoing training that is required for them to successfully run those projects. <laughs> We believe that if we create the capacity in the community to do it themselves, it, the projects will have success in the long term. Along with the success of the sewing projects, the association has also facilitated the development of other income generating projects, such as the horticultural cooperatives and the provision of food projects to the mine. Shamumi Alberto Abdala, Mugawa. A Kemadi nos apoiou em alguns instrumentos no início desta associação. Estamos a produzir e vender a cozinha da Kenimara. The farmers have evolved from a stage whereby they were producing the tomatoes, the carrots and the lettuce that were only produced at the beginning of the project to supply the mine. But now you find all those products also available in the local market and that the local community is also consuming them. So that is what we're aiming for when we set up those projects. We make sure that, yes, there is the mine on one hand, which is the bigger market for the people that benefit from those projects, but still the community must be an alternative market, and that is the only way we will ensure that those projects will be sustainable. As time goes by, we're expanding the, the types of projects we do, and we receive uh, proposals from local villagers, and we analyze them to see if they're viable, and if they are, we, we look at giving them finance. The way we set up those projects, it's all based on community consultation. All the projects that we implement are outlined in our strategic plan. The plan reflects what the needs and the priorities are for each of the villages. All this process is done together in consultation with the community and with their involvement. Kenmo is fortunate that the mining process doesn't have a significant level of impact on the environment. The way we do that is we deposit the sand which has no economic value at the back of the dredge pond and during the mine process the fines or the clays are separated out from the rest of the sand and we are able to concentrate them during the drying process and once the clays have dried out we mix it into the top level of the sand and recontour the area. Um, this makes the sand slightly more fertile than it was before because it improves water retention qualities. We, we have a nursery where we grow various crops and we use this nursery to reseed the area that's been mined and after a suitable period of time we get it tested to show that it is it's no worse off and in most cases better in terms of fertility than it was before. What you're seeing here behind is uh, the Kenmer nursery. We prepare seedlings that are then used for the trials that are done at the areas uh, that have been mined. So you don't want just to put back what existed but also try to improve. So it's part of the improvement of what existed before and teaching and training the community. The soils here in this area are generally poor in nutrient value before rehabilitation, before mining. So, um, what we have had to do in some cases is to try to raise the nutrient value from the background levels to something higher than that. As part of the whole rehabilitation process, handing back of rehabilitated land is a process that is done in strict collaboration with the district government but also with the local communities. 
como fizeram as minas, já acabaram e taparam tudo. E ele, chamamos nós para ele entregar, quando nós queremos fazer uma coisa, deixa me sonhar, plantar qualquer coisa da mandioca, feijão, as comidas que comem os povos, a comunidade. Ele começou a entregar, até agora. The needs of the community are changing. They'd rather be educated and they'd rather be able to provide for and educate their children. And you know, I think that that's sort of what's, what's gradually developing. And I sort of think the legacy is what's happening now as opposed to what we leave at the end. And really it's, it's the continued development of people there into having longer, healthier, more satisfied lives and become greater participants in the world that they live in.